Good day, everyone, and welcome to Aussie Tech Edge. Just another episode, another week. It's the second of May, two thousand and nineteen, and it's episode six hundred and thirty. So, welcome, everyone. I'm your host, Glenn Goodman, and uh, yes, it's going to be another jam-packed episode full of news and views, and maybe a few. Uh, Reviews, maybe? I don't know. We'll see where it takes us. Uh, you can contact us at Glenn, uh, Jordan, or Joe at aussietechheads.com.au. But Joe's actually got a direct email these days, and probably for forever. It's uh, What is your direct direct one, Joe? I've got, I've got a Gmail one, Danny, but you have got another one, haven't you? Uh, I'm using the G one at the, uh, Gmail one at the moment. It's J- uh, Joe the Gadget Man at gmail.com. All right. But other than that, you can just uh, first name at aussietechheads.com.au. We are brought to you by athwebhosting.com.au, which is a web hosting business. And it will give you your web page on SSD drives, immediate activation, SSL certificates, Aussie support domain registration, and more. And also brought to you by startnewcompany.com.au. Register your company, your proprietary limited company. Fast, easy, and direct with ASIC all uh, company docs provided so you'll be able to uh, register your company in about 10 minutes have the docs go out the front door and uh, begin to trade also register your abn tfn payg and gst Ooh, all that good stuff hey to, to make some money and also welcome a new sponsor is aussie bite clock faces now this is actually jace he's uh he makes the clock faces for the fitbit watches so if you're interested, uh, you can go into the Fitbit app store and have a look for his Aussie Bite clock faces. And if you're listening to the show, he's given us a promo code for 33% discount. All you have to do at checkout is punch in the coupon code ATH19. Nice and easy. You get your 33% off. Now, I've got a couple of... Uh, look, this I've just got a couple of photos here, actually, if you want to have a look. Oop, not that one. How's that one? That one there? That's one of his... That's the weather. His biggest selling is a weather weather clock face and apparently uh they go good like you remember like they're only a small little screen that you're trying to uh, get all this stuff on so he's got everything there temperature um everything good stuff all right um yes so you can call us if you like if you're listening to us or watching us live on the facebook you can call us now and you can have a chat to us uh just be patient and we'll bring you in when we can it's uh phone number is 02801520288 and you have to put in a meeting room it'll ask you for a meeting room number which is 548-358-6358 you got all that cool uh, all right, so call that, put the number in, you go into the waiting room and we'll bring you in when we can. Uh, AussieTechRadio.com, you can uh, wall-to-wall, back-to-back, 24-7 podcasts. And Facebook, like us on the Facebook at facebook.com forward slash AussieTechEds and youtube.com forward slash AussieTechEds. The show notes and other stuff on the face on the uh, website is AussieTechEds.com dot au forward slash podcast we're also on the twitter won't go up through up with that but uh let's welcome uh the boys this week we're back after geez it seems like a while doesn't it but uh thanks to the good uh the the strong capable hands of uh will and jace last week it was great and i think will he's got a new name will robinson <laughs> i think jace had actually fair dink and called him will robinson by mistake i thought it was part of their part of their gig but it <laughs> was a mistake it was pretty funny last week all right so let's uh this week let's g'day, say good day to joe Hey Joe. Hey Glenn, how you going? Not too bad, thanks. How you been? I've been pretty good. That's the way. Good stuff. And also Jordan over there. How you going, Jordan? He's all right, but he's got no voice. His sound's gone again. No, I'm here. Oh, there I'm he here. goes. Just, You're back. I couldn't find the thing to unmute it. <laughs> oh, okay. You're back. All I'm right. back now. All right. So, what have you guys been up to? What's been going on, Joe? Anything exciting? You've been buying tech. All that sort of stuff. Yes, mate. Yes, I'm. I'm so happy. I got my uh, Samsung Smart Things uh, Wi-Fi hub today. Nice. I've been waiting for it all week. Well, where'd you buy that from? Was that an overseas job? No, no. That's uh, an, an official Australian version of the Samsung Smart Wi-Fi. It's uh, believe it or not comes from a RAVC company. That's somewhere down in Melbourne. That's a a car. An insurance company, if I remember right, is that is that right, Jordan? Is that RABC down down there? RACB. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, I got it from that company there. Yeah, I think it's uh, equivalent to your NRMA. So same. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I don't understand why a company um, that's you know selling you know car insurance and and does cars uh, doing with tech, but you know there you go. Yeah, well, I think everything's everyone's looking for the little angles now. You know, at, you know, you go to the post office and you can buy CDs. You know, so nothing to do with letters. It's CDs and laminators and everything. Post office sells everything these days. Hard drives, yeah. everything. 
Uh, yeah. So um, yeah. So you're going to talk to us more about those that Wi-Fi thing later, Joe? Was that the plan? Yeah. Yeah. yeah um. All yeah. Right. This one here. This one here is particularly has got like a a Wi-Fi um, router type thing where it's got a built-in Zigbee and built-in Z-Wave, um, and it's also got built-in Wi-Fi. So it's like a, a smart things hub, um, but it, it's caters for all the different devices for your IoT devices for your home and for your light bulbs and whatever else you have. Right. Okay. Okay. So um. So have you got a? So did you want to talk about that now, or is that is that it? Or because I got some questions. If you, I'm not yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. What, yeah. Well, what I what I intend to do with this one is um I've got you know you can use it for things like you put um, a little sensor in your letterbox, and when you uh, get the mail coming through, it pops up a little message up on your screen saying that the mail is there. Nice. Uh, what else can you do with it? You can set it to control your lighting, right, uh, on and off, right. Um, yeah. So, how much was this little fella worth? This one here was uh, two ninety nine. Uh, it comes in a kit with um, the smart Wi Fi. Mm. Um, again, it's, it, it's got the Zigbee um, uh, protocol and it's got the uh, Z Wave protocol built into it. But um, the most important thing about this particular one is that. It's an Australian certified one. You you got you need to be careful when you're buying, you know, Zigbee and and, and uh, Z Wave products um, mm. for the Australian market because they do have a different frequency range. Um, so therefore, you need to make sure that you got to buy it for the Australian market. Mm, right. So yeah, because I was just telling you before the show, like I bought a hard drive, uh, what they call hard drive toaster, and the, the one I had was uh, it had an American plug. I had to put it into a, a you know, a converter, and it, it just was just loose all the time, and the, the power was going in and out depending if someone walked up up overhead or whatever. And uh, yeah, it was hopeless. So much better to get Australian versions, is all approved and all that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, so that's good. When are you going to have that all <clears throat> set up, Joe? Excuse me. Um, I'll, I'll probably pull it, pull, pull it out of the box tomorrow. I only just got it today. All right. Uh, this, this particular one came with a couple of sensors as well. So, you know, you have like, um, you know, window sensors and uh, you know, knock sensors. Yeah. Um, so that, you know, if anything gets, you know, knocked or gets bumped, mm. movement sensors type things. Because so I was, can... I was nearly, I was thinking of you the other day when I was, I was nearly going to buy a, a Wi-Fi light bulb. Then I changed my mind to a Wi-Fi PowerPoint. Um, but I did end up going through with it because I was, that was just a buying it just to you know get my cart over. I think fifty dollars, so I get free delivery. <laughs> so I thought, well, well, yeah, look, Wi-Fi light bulbs, they're good, but you just need to remember that the Wi-Fi light bulb needs to have the the switch up at the wall turned on, and it needs to stay on. Mm. If you don't turn uh, that on and leave it on. Uh, even though the Wi-Fi is connected directly to the the light bulb, it won't work. It's got to stay on. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, I think uh, it's about thirty bucks. So is that like a fair price for a bulb or a, or a power adapter, Wi-Fi adapter? Yeah, look, they they range from um, from prices somewhere between nineteen ninety five to up to sixty dollars for the Philips Hue ones. Right. So, yeah. Um, you know, if you want to get the Philips Hue ones, they're a bit more expensive. Yeah, um, I, th- I thought I, I don't could... know if they're better or not, but they're a bit more expensive. I thought I'd start off with the PowerPoint uh, and plug a light into it and just play around that way. So then it's not sort of having to buy a bulb, which is like a one-use type of thing. I can, you know, use the PowerPoint different things like TV in the bedroom or something, you know, so it's not on standby all the time uh, and things like that. But uh, did you get any tech while you while we were away for the last two weeks, Jordan? Are you you been uh, teching up? Uh, not, no, nah, not me. I'll tell you what, though, I've always been curious as to how much power these light bulbs and stuff use when they're not on you know because they are potentially yeah i'll be very little be very oh, yeah I, i'd say it'd be about you know cents cents you know per year cents a, a year you know mm. 10 15 20 cents a year but you're right everything that's why like when i said uh, uh you know do it on my tv in the bedroom on standby because i think like standby devices i think they can be like seven dollars a year you know, yeah. particular devices. So well, not only that, they're also. I think they're also risk if they're on. Yeah, yeah, I guess you so. Know, what, if the, what if it's some cheap quality light bulb that's you know? You're on a bit soft. And yeah. Blows, you know, you go out for the day and you come home and find it's burnt your lamp off. You know, like. Well. You're not getting like my my grandparents are you there, Jordan. They no, you know, just, turn the TV off every night and. No, it's just food for thought. You know, you go out and you you put stuff on standby, and you always wonder what's still running. But with the light bulbs, what's you know, you've still got all the Wi-Fi running. It's got to be there. Yeah, it's it's like uh, you know, it, it's like 
it's like AI on your phone. It's got to be listening to you all the time. It's always on. It's always waiting for you to give it a command. Yeah. Well, there's there's been heaps of stories about AI, you know, listening and all this sort of stuff of late, hasn't there? Like even I read somewhere today there was a, a one of those Google Nest, I think it's some sort of baby monitors or something that got hacked, and then they were actually playing porn back through it into the baby's room and the babies the little girls come out and said mummy there's noises in the room all the time and the mum's just going no there's not no there's not and then uh, I don't know how long, ever long later she decides she'd have a listen and yeah she could hear this porn music coming through it makes you wonder how a baby monitor gets on the internet like, well it's all it's all wi-fi'd up isn't it it's and I suppose they dig through your they they dig through and yeah you bet I think you, we lost your mic Jordan we lost your mic you might have to stand a bit closer, Jordan. Or might, you know, yeah, or there might be a, yeah, or there might be like a, you know, like I said, it makes you wonder how get, how they get on the internet. But if it's on the local Wi-Fi, it means that you, you, your Wi-Fi has got to be hacked for someone to get in there. Well, that's right. Yeah, that's right. But uh, they do, and that's why I think there was a, we had a story a couple of months ago. Now I think there there was some legislation, wasn't it, in California? They wanted to pass that any Wi-Fi enabled device had to have a uh, a changeable password on first boot up or something. So, um, but that's all, that's that's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, I've heard about that too. Yeah, mm. but uh, look, moving on. I think uh, let's uh, look. What did I do over the Easter? Not much. I caught up with Marcus. Hello, Marcus. Shout out to him. He's a long time listener. He made contact. I met up with him last year. Went down the pub, had a few, and uh, this time he came around and and bought a whole box. So uh, that was a good session. Thanks, Marcus. <laughs> we'll, we'll see you next year. Well done. Well done. Welcome anytime. Uh, all right. Uh, let's. I noticed see. on uh, Facebook that you caught up with. Jason the other week. I did catch up with Jason. And he, did he, am I reading correctly, I think he commented that he'd never met you? Not in the flesh. <laughs> like face to face? There's always only ever been online. So this was the yeah. first time after all these years that you'd actually met him face to face. That's right. Well, I've never, I've never wow. met you guys face to face either. How long did you know Jason for before you met him? How, like how long have you been doing shows together before? I mean, even before oh. Jim and I came along. Yeah, geez, I don't know. It'd be a while. It'd be... Oh, it must be a, a good six years. So a six-year online relationship. And yes. Met. And it finally what blossomed into a coffee. It? Yeah. <laughs> was, it, was it worth it? Was it what it was all cracked up to be? It was totally you know, worth it. Of course it, totally, it was. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? It makes you think, you know, you never meet these people, and six years later you meet them in the flesh and you think, oh. Yeah. Did, did he look taller than he, you know? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> was he taller than you expected? Was yeah. shorter than you expected? Yeah, yeah. I know. It's, you just don't know because all you see is people from the chest up, you know, yeah. and you're doing these things. And uh, But, yeah, it's always good to get out and press the flesh. Did you, ha- did and, you, you know? have any PO? <laughs> I hope not. No. <laughs> It's something you'd never know if you're online dating, would you? You'd well, that's know. right. No, well, no one tells you, do they? But yeah, no. I don't know. But yeah, no, we had a coffee and had a bit of a chat. It was good. He was on his way through, so it was nice of him to to take the time and call in. Yeah, so thanks, Jace, for that. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, uh, you would have heard Jason and Will last week on the show. So if you, so they had a, a very good show. Yes. Yeah, and you said earlier that he kept calling Will Will Robinson. I'm thinking, which Will Robinson was he referring to? Because I think mid show, I thought he was referring to a different Will Robinson. He was referring to the danger of Will, danger Will Robinson, danger Yeah, Will that's Robinson. what I thought he was, but then he started singing a song about Will Robinson or something. I'm like, oh, I think they moved on to, yeah, um, what's that song, Mrs. Robinson? Yeah. Oh, is that what it was? <laughs> the, ah. They go all over the place, the the two greatest podcasters. You know, you They're never can tell. Well, that's yeah. right, a lot to learn from them, a lot to learn. <laughs> uh, all right, let's, uh, it was a good show, I had listened, it was, they did well. Yeah, they did good well. stuff, good. All right, let's move on with... Uh, Microsoft and they may ditch a 60 day password refresh. So, uh, yeah, so apparently there's a what well, I'll start this one off with what is a security baseline? So, this is a Microsoft term, and a security baseline is a Microsoft what Microsoft advice to users on how to test uh, how to best secure Windows, which isn't easy as uh, Microsoft explains because there are over 3,000 group policy settings for Windows 10, which does not include over 1,800 Internet Explorer 11 settings. So the baseline helps users and partners figure out just how to run Windows securely. Microsoft updates the baselines continuously and late last week issued new drafts for Windows 10 version 1903 and server 1903. So changes to the baseline include changing the password policy that forces the password change every 60 days uh, for the Windows administrator and designated guest accounts. So I guess so what they're saying, what Microsoft is saying is that their policy 
is change the password every 60 day every 60 days so now they've got rid of that they've they've, they've gone away from that so a microsoft employee uh and apparently a self-described windows cybersec nerd a guy called aaron margosis uh, justified this proposed change and he said if an organization has successfully implemented banned password lists multi-factor authentication detection of password guessing attacks and detection of, of anomalous login attempts do they need any periodic password expiration hmm and if they haven't implemented modern mitigations how much protection will they really gain from password expiration so uh, i don't know about you but i don't think i've got many of those uh those uh mitigating factors in there i don't think i've got a detection of password guessing attacks no detection of anomalous logon attacks no on the website i do do they have any period of, yeah, yeah. so anyway so if you've got all that done you don't need to to do that but yeah so, uh, so that's interesting that microsoft changes the, the uh the uh the baseline there for that he goes on i to think start- the way people are going with their passwords these days i think they're learning aren't they really to try and Mm. kind of make them more difficult not just the same word or letters all the time yeah know? well i guess so yeah. he goes on to say that periodic password expiration is an ancient and obsolete mitigation of very low value and now mm. they don't believe it's worthwhile for, for their baseline to enforce any specific value by removing it from our baseline rather than recommending a particular value or no expiration organizations can choose whatever best suits their pass their perceived needs without contradicting the guidelines Geez, I what sort of company would actually follow these guidelines precisely, do you reckon? It would be like a government agencies and all this sort of stuff. Like something, I guess, they where if they're hacked, they're dead and they, they probably have to follow all these guidelines for legal and insurance reasons. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, so now they've got a bit like of... Like schools and stuff like that, they just have to rotate the passwords constantly. I mean, if... Mm. You know, I mean, if what if the password gets out, you know? Yeah, well, that's right. I think the one of the most famous like, ones... Like, you oh, know... Yeah, I think one of the most famous ones of late that I can remember anyway was that guy from the, the Democrat Party in the US, uh, John Podestra, I think he was. He had his emails hacked by WikiLeaks, but apparently, uh, as, as the story goes, his password was password1234. You know, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think yeah. people are slowly learning to change their passwords. But, mm. you know, for example, I had um, my daughter's laptop for school come home and I wanted to put my own account on it so I could put some stuff on it so I rang at school and said can I have the admin password or something and they gave me the admin password for me and, and, and they said but that's going to expire in 30 days yeah yeah and, and they the, said and they said it's it's just really it's just because what if another student gets a hold of that password yeah and then they share it with their other friends and their other friends and their other friends and all of a sudden these passwords are being you know. But it is annoying though. Like you, you, you log into a site and it says, "Oh, you haven't changed your password for ninety days. Change it." So then you type in another one, one that you've already used because it's easy to remember. And then you go, "Oh, you can't use a previous one," uh, and you just you start pulling your hair out, don't you? But yeah. um, but look, I've tidied up all my passwords a lot of late. I've got LastPass working really well. Every new password now, I, I randomly generate from LastPass. Do you really? It. I've yep. got most of mine done through LastPass, but not all of them. I'm still guilty of at times of. Oh, I've, yeah, I've still got weak ones. using my, my familiar password on a, on sites that I might regularly use that mm. I'm constantly trying to get in and out of or something. But. Yeah, like new sites. I think old sites or old ones that I've done, I've got the old password. But now with the last pass, I've, I've tied it up so Google Chrome and LastPass aren't competing to fill the password uh, boxes, which was driving me insane. And, uh, and so... Yeah, yeah I think you just go with bad. LastPass. Don't worry about Google Chrome. That's, or, you got to turn it off. You, it'll yeah, drive you mental if you keep LastPass. Pass is fantastic. I, I recommend it to quite a lot of people. Are you a, 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 a password manager user, Joe? You, LastPass or yeah, something? Yeah, I also use LastPass. Um, I use the free version of LastPass. Um, I'm I'm a bit guilty of still using some of my own passwords. I haven't migrated over to the 16-figure password that their LastPass provides for you. I'm still a bit. I don't know. I'm nervous about, about that. passwords to someone else to store. Yeah. Well, I decided with the last pass, I thought I must have gone through some sort of security, security, um, you know, phase or something through through the week. Because I'm I, not really worried about it getting hacked or anything like that. I'm, I'm more concerned about the fact that um, what if I need the password and then all of a sudden there's this 16 figure password that's uh, letters, numbers, uppercase, lowercase, and I can't remember. Then what? 
Well, I guess if, well, if you're not supposed, that's the idea. Is you're not supposed to remember it. Well, yeah, you're you're can't get into the site. One password. Can't get into, what if for mm. some reason you can't get into LastPass and you've got to use it? Then what? Well, then you're screwed. <laughs> well, I don't. Yeah, we well, true. Because LastPass can't even give you your password back because they can't. They can't even cancel it because of the, the way that your password encrypts your account. They can't even undo it for mm. you. Well, I tried yeah, to. Right. I yeah, tried to, right. to use. I wanted to use LastPass and set up a two-factor authentication. And uh, but they they didn't have a, uh, a compatibility with my Authy app that I use, so I was very disappointed. Well, I've got the two two, two factor authentication with them. With Authy, not with Authy, but with their own app, the approval app. Yeah, that's where that's probably the path I'm going to have to go down. I think. But yeah, I thought about it. It works. I think it also works with um. Works with Google. The Google and the Microsoft one as well. Yes, yeah, and I think the Google one you can use it with Authy, so I might. Suss it out, but I don't want to any test Google, it. Any but... Google, any Google ones can be used with Authy. Right, um, Andrew, he uses Dashlane in the Facebook Lounge. I've so... heard good reports mm. about Dashlane. Yeah, so that's good. But you know what? You know the proofs in the pudding. They say I've read reviews on LastPass, and, and you know, I'm, and I'm the first one to be hesitant to let anybody else store my passwords. And I still, even in LastPass, I, I don't put some of my very secure passwords, like banking passwords and things like that. I'm too scared to put in there. Mm. Um, but they have a very good track record. They do have a really good track record. I mean, once they were, once before they somebody tried to hack them and they they told it, they let everyone know about it and how they were dealing with it. And yeah. Kept it out in the open and were honest and truthful about it. They didn't hide the hack under the bench and not tell anyone or anything like that. And they dealt with it. So yeah. they've got a good track record, you know. Well, see, I'm so skeptical about it that I've I use two systems. I use the last pass. Plus, then I use another app that's uh, like a cloud-based password manager, but it's just a manual one. Mm. So every every website I log into, um, or every you know eBay or any shopping, anything that I'm using that needs a password, I I first put it in this password manager, which gets backed up to the cloud, and then once that's got done, then I go through and I let LastPass do it as well. So is it encrypted? Your first one that you do into the cloud, or is it just yes, it going is, up yeah. as a tip? Yeah. yeah, it is. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Now, um, look, we'll just move but on. What's the, what's the benefit, Glenn? Do you know, or Joe? Do you know what's the benefit of getting a premium account with LastPass? Do you know what the difference is? Um, I don't know because I don't have a, a premium account. I've only got a free one as well. I've never needed to buy one. I did have in the early days. I'll gonna. I'll get it up now. We'll just have a quick look before we move on to something else. Because I think uh, Joe's got another Microsoft story that we'll get onto. But yeah. uh, but just we'll quickly look at this LastPass.com because I did. I think it was only twelve bucks a year when I did it. But now, like, there's no real reason yeah, I just to wondered even spend what that. that. <laughs> yeah, it used to be um, you had to pay for it to get anything good out of it, but now you don't. The free version is is suffice. So pricing. Here we go. What's under pricing? Oh, it's pretty. Oh, it's gone up a bit, but anyway, uh, secure online backup plan and enjoy. It. Go premium. This first step to be uh, all of your. Okay, so for families, you can go five fifty two a month. Uh, six users, all your family passwords organised secure at your fingertips. I don't really understand the the value. The family there. thing. The family thing's great, and you know, I don't know whether a lot of people know that with LastPass, but you can actually have a, a second person that can log into your account. But look at that, everything's ticked here. Uh, so I'm just looking at a comparison between the plans on the site. So everything's ticked for every plan until you get down to, or well, six, oh, yeah, of course that's not ticked. Family manager dashboard, that really doesn't matter, does it? Unlimited shared folders is not in the free plan, but does that, I don't use the folders. Uh, you don't get an admin dashboard, so I don't know what I'm missing there. Easy user management, you don't get. Standard security policies, basic reporting, you don't get. Federated login with AD, whatever the hell that is. What is that? Rather than creating and remembering a separate master password, allow employees to log into a LastPass with their Active Directory password. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. It looks like looks like to me if you're going to be using it more for more than just for personal use, then yeah, it might be a, an idea to get the paid version, the premium version. But if you're just using it for personal use, but you even, just use the free version. Yeah. But even with personal use, though, like Joe, as I was just going to say before, for you, like if you're worried about forgetting your password, you know, you can actually share a backup account with your, you know, your wife or your whatever. You can share a backup that they can have access to your, with a certain rule, they can have access to your account. Mm. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Which is handy to know. So if you've got someone that you trust enough, like if you wanted really? to, you know, if you died, <laughs> for example. Well, that's right. I, I've you can been have trying a backup to get... person that can log into your account once you die and, and close your Facebook, you know. I mean, yeah, I think right. I read an article on the internet just before that there's just as many dead people on Facebook as there is live people. <laughs> yeah, I've got something about that later coming up as well. You know? Yeah, well, that's right. I've, I've been trying to get my wife to grab uh, LastPass as well and start using it so that way we'll put the same master password so she's got access to everything that I have. I've got access to everything she has. Like you said, just in case you know you get you know hit by a car or something, or you get logged out and you can't remember. You just have you share. You don't actually have to have a master password shared. You don't have to give her your password. You just actually share your account yes, with another. With a, yes, yeah, that's right. So they log in with their account, but they can all of a sudden have access to certain passwords. You, you don't have to give them access to all passwords. But no, I'll, I'll just give her access to everything. I'm mm. not going to hide. <laughs> <laughs> and I use it for, on my phone as well. I found it great. But just interesting. Oh, it's fantastic on the phone, isn't it? There's nothing yeah, worse good. than trying to type in a technical password on that little phone keyboard. It's like, I just, just want to it end up. up with a fingerprint and you go bang and you're done. I just want to end up and go, uh, I can see what it's available on, what platform is Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Opera and Edge. I can't see any Explorer there, Jordan. I think Explorer's died. But anyway, yeah, so any of the listeners, if they want to know, um, it's 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 a wallet, uh, cloud services. Oh, the okay. other one that you were using, yeah. All right. Now, what's your little and Andrew one? on Facebook said he's using Dash Dash Lane as well. Yeah, we got there about ten minutes ago. Oh, you got that coming. <laughs> I thought I didn't know you were talking about Andrew. I thought you were just saying uh, maybe I wasn't paying attention. All right. Uh, so, Joe, you had a uh, Windows story. Yeah, you're saying before that the um, the Windows updates for security reasons, but there's um, something else that some people need to be aware of, that some systems with small um, hard drives in them won't be able to install the new Windows uh, 10 update um, that's coming up in May the 10th, um, which is next week sometime. I've heard about that, I think. Yeah, normally Windows um, would use um, the operating system to bump up its... Um, minimum hardware requirements that the software actually needs. Uh, Windows 10 um, was, um, yeah, well, it, well it's, up, it's up to update to now 1903, as you were saying before. Mm. Uh, previous versions were using 32-bit, um, the 32-bit the, the version of Windows 10 before had a minimum storage requirement of 16 gigabytes. Um, and if you were using a 64-bit version of Windows, 10 you need to have 20 gigabytes um, just to install it and and to run some sort of updates that's huge um, well it's it, it, it's a lot but at the same time you know I'm, I'm thinking I've got this tablet at home which mm. is a dual dual boot tablet it's a um, uh, it runs Windows 10 and it also runs Android and when I bought it I bought it with 64 gigabytes so therefore what it's done somehow it's split it in half and it's using that. So I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to upgrade to this 1903. Yeah, and the USB drives and that don't work either. If anything, they cause problems too, from what I read. Yeah, yeah, I'll get to that because I've got that as well. I've got, so, I've got um, it all. So you're kind of left stuck with, you know, backing up and reinstalling a fresh new install. Yeah. You so got upgrade, but you'll have to back up first and then rewipe and restart fresh. So what? What? How big was that device you had, Jordan? That you? I mean, uh, Joe. That you were saying you didn't look like you'd be able to update it. How? What was the storage it's on 60, that? It's sixty-four gigabytes uh, storage, right? yeah. and it's a dual boot, so it runs Android and it runs Windows Ten. Mm. Yeah, I've got one of those right here. It does the same thing. Mine's sixty-four. It's a tech last tablet. It does Windows and Android. Yeah, yeah, and they're great little devices. Can 64, you? But, sixty-four gig. But when that update comes up, the biggest problem is is that I won't be able to just install Windows. I won't be able to erase it and install Windows because the Windows that was installed on this was from a ROM, like an image that was pre-built for, that, oh, yeah. for yeah. that device. So unless I can actually get the actual upgraded image. Yeah. Oh, you, might, you, you might find, Jordan, um, the, the one that I have is um, comes from China, obviously, they're made in China. And the version of Windows 10 that's on there is the Chinese version, just you know, just being you know, re relanguaged the English. So um, you actually have to install that same version. You can't run 
uh, say you, you want to download um, Windows 10 you know, US version or AU version or UK version and, and yes. then load that onto the tablet, it, it, it'll, it'll load, but it won't authenticate as the, um, no. um, the, the pass, uh, the, yeah, it won't let, let you authenticate as a genuine user for that no. one, but unless that you actually download it. the one that it came with. Yeah, well, that's what I've done in the past, is downloaded the one it came with and reinstalled, rebuilt. Does Windows still put out that, that like the portable versions? You know, where, like, so shops, that they just make, uh, what are they, the kiosk version? Do they, I haven't heard of that. Oh, I, don't, I don't think they have a kiosk version, but um, this story does go on to say that um, the, the new uh, 1903 would need seven gigabytes of extra disk space. Mm. Uh, so therefore, um, the minimum that they allow you to to use uh, for this sort of Windows, you know, 32 bit or 64 bit is 32 gig. Right. So for me on that, I'll have to um, I'll have to completely erase it, reinstall the first one, so it's a fresh copy and leaving as as much space as possible to update. Mm. Well, yeah. you, you've only really got to get the OS on there. I suppose you could use external storage but well you can't that's the problem the usb external storages and stuff won't mm. does, doesn't yours have a little memory card reader on the side uh it does it's shed itself but they did say i read an article on it and and um i think you were saying too when you were going to read something about that but i'm pretty sure windows had a problem updating anything that had external sd drives or usb drives sort of sort of i'll get that in a sec um when joe's finished that there might kind of, that might kind of answer a few questions about yeah that. is there any more with that one joe yeah well all i was just going to say was that um windows 10 does come in a smaller uh, lighter version it's called the iot edition as far as i'm aware right okay um, what Get that, that does is it's got a smaller footprint mm. and it's mainly um mainly geared towards running you know iot yes. devices yeah you're probably not going to be able to put it on i think did you have a i think did you have? To, I've gone off your story now, but was there an expiry date for the eighteen oh nine version? Like end of life? Yes, there is. Uh, um, January the ninth, two thousand twenty four. <laughs> right. Well, it's coming up <laughs> soon. I thought it was sooner than that. Seven get to expire soon as well. I think that's finished. Yeah, that's it's heartbreaking. Yeah, I don't have any Windows uh, sevens. So much history there. Oh, you know, there is an XP as well. Time to move on. <laughs> I do. I, I the only X seven I run, the only Windows seven I run, is a virtual one, uh, so I can run my little my ob in there. I run a virtual XP, not a virtual seven. <laughs> That's how bad I am with my ob. I think we talked about that the other week. Yeah, I think we might have. Um, but, um, the IoT, I was going to say, uh, Internet of Things. Yeah, you can get that for Raspberry Pi. I've never tried it. I've, I've always been curious. No. You see, yeah. you see, this this version of IoT is actually designed to run on a Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that'd be yeah. It'd be good to see what all that happens. I might have to, have to watch some videos and see what how we go get with all an that. Extra SD card and install it on your Raspberry Pi and see mm. what it does. Um, is that it, Joe? You got a yeah, Raspberry Pi in your plan, I think. Yeah, I got a two. Two. I got two. You're doing better than me. I got I'm two. Doing, <laughs> I'm feeling jibbed. I better go out and buy another one just so I can keep up. No, I just put Cody on them. And um, I can access, yeah, it lets me access the server. I've got Cody on them as well, but what I love about it is that the Plex plugin that's now officially supported by Cody. It's awesome. Oh, is it now? So you just go into the Cody plugins, especially with the, um, what's it called? The, um, what's it, is it Libra or Lek or something? The yeah. One that pre-made. Yeah, that one's got the Plex plugin and everything just in the normal. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. There'll be someone, hopefully Christopher's watching. I saw his name pop up earlier. If he's watching the Plex, this the episode, he'll be happy with that. Been, yeah, the Plex clients have been really bad on most of those yes. devices. But the Plex client in the Cody one, the, the plug-in for Cody is awesome. So you, you go right. to Cody. There you, you go. All your little apps and stuff that you normally would. Yep. And then you have Plex as an app as well. And it pops do up do you use the Plex a lot, Jordan? I love Plex. Love Plex. Yeah, I mean, I've got the, the, the full version, you know, the one that you got the, the paid version as well, the premium version. I've never bought a, a Plex Pass. So, um, I've always just used the free one. Mm. Okay. Never really needed the Plex Pass, but there is a lot of features you can get for, you know, having TV cards and all sorts of things included. But I think, you know, the beauty of having the Plex client on Cody is that it kind of filled the Plex 
The Plex fills the gap in what Cody doesn't have there, but Cody does everything else. Like, you can jump. There's so many things you can do with Cody that you could probably, you know, you could probably do with Plex Pass. <laughs> yeah. You know, with, with PVR, car, TV cars. Yeah. yeah, the reason I got the Plex Pass was um, it allowed you access via your mobile phone when you weren't at home. So it, it Yeah, it, I can do that on the free one. Can you do that with the free one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, uh, that was the main reason I bought the Plex Pass. What it does, the, the, buying the account allows you to synchronize. So you might have a movie or something at home, and you don't want to stream it over the internet, so you can synchronize it to your phone and actually download it to your phone. And then, yeah, like you would do with Spotify, you pay for a Spotify account so you can download the songs, and then you don't have to have to stream them over the internet. There was something I remember I was talking to one of our listeners Chris about he, he I'll tell him how how I like the Cody and he said he liked the Plex he didn't like he couldn't go to Cody because the Plex didn't transcode or something or it wouldn't transcode properly yeah I think Cody does read the Plex servers but just not in a it doesn't display it in such a nice way. Mm. I think they've actually fixed that thing that problem that you're talking about there oh okay oh um, yeah Chris if you're watching you'll uh, go and have another look at it um, yeah, but yeah, have, another, have another look at it I think they fixed it yeah, we'll just get it back on, just back on to the Microsoft stuff. Uh, this, yeah. as Joe was mentioning, the new update coming. The was it nineteen oh three? Yes, there's more trouble. It's not just with what we've discussed, but it's uh, not more trouble with warnings that uh, connected with the warning. It does not like PCs connected to USB or SD card storage devices. So go yeah, figure that yeah, one. That's the updates doesn't like it. Is that, is that right? Uh, yes, yeah. So a new advisory warns that inappropriate drive reassignment can occur on Windows 10 based computers that have external device or SD memory card attached during the installation. So pretty much in a nutshell is that uh, so you've got an external drive as drive G where well, I don't know you might have all your your Microsoft Word documents on and then after the update Windows decided it it's now called drive M. So uh, probably Does it delete the files off the drive? No, but it just reassigns the lettering. Not a big oh, it deal. Reassigns the, the, the driving side, yeah. Yeah, so it's not a big deal, but it's a deal <laughs> for so some can people. Still, can it still use that space as hard drive space for caching up the install? I wonder. Yeah, well, I don't know, but it says the uh, the up is, yeah. So uh, needless to say, Windows and applications that expect a file to be on OneDrive will not behave well because it's going to be somewhere else. So which is why Microsoft has stopped the update, writing. Uh, these computers are currently blocked from receiving the update. So if you've got a, a, a USB drive or something plugged in, you're going to get a warning to say that, uh, what does it say? The following things need your attention uh, to continue the installation and keep your Windows personal files and apps. Uh, your PC and hardware isn't ready for this version of Windows 10. No action is needed. Windows Update will offer the version of Windows 10 automatically once the issue has been resolved. But you can resolve it. <laughs> that's, that's really insightful, isn't it? You get to that and you go, so what? What's the what's, what's, yeah. what's the solution? So that's like that's a warning screen that pops up on the computer saying that you can't update it. But I mean, why wouldn't they? Why the hell wouldn't they just also put in? But because this but, is what you do. This is what if happens. You unplug your USB drive, and you might be alright. That's right. Unplug your drives, take your SD cards out, and continue with the update. Uh, and then plug everything back in. <laughs> That's crazy. Why well, did they say that? Billy, Jason and Will may have had this conversation on last week. So oh, okay. Well, we'll, we'll move on. What I get from that is that it probably needs driver updates, maybe. No, I, I don't know. I think Windows, I don't know. Look, they had that debacle with the erasing files. Like, this is a minor problem. <laughs> drive, yeah. drive letter reassignment. Everyone's reassigning something these days. It's just now it's just Microsoft's <laughs> turn. <laughs> So, all right. Um, what else you got, Joe? Um, Google soon will be able to let you auto delete your location and tracking data. Okay. Yeah. So apparently, Google is introducing a new feature for your Google account that will allow you to automatically delete your location history and web and activity uh, after a set period of time. You'll be able to delete the data after either three months or eighteen months. Right. And it'll continue to delete on a rolling basis. Yeah, right here. Now, because it, it, this would all be stored in the cloud, so there's no real storage issues here. It's just for privacy, I'd imagine. Well, it says that it's rolling out this new feature worldwide, and it'll be available 
um, to existing options that you can delete the data manually. You know, you can still delete the data manually. Yeah. Um, it's been, and what does it say here? It says it's... Go against your allocated space if you don't delete it. But wouldn't that all be held in the cloud? The Google... That's what I mean. Oh, well, I thought you were saying, likely, yeah. Yeah, most yeah. likely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Well, it wouldn't be much. But, sorry, Jake, keep going. Yeah, I was just going to say that um, it'll be available um, in addition to existing deleting the data manually. Um, so, therefore, um, you know, your location history and web surfing history and app, uh, all, all the apps and stuff that you use mm. um, will, will all get removed uh, on a three-month or an 18-month basis, which is, I don't know, is that, is that a good idea? I mean... Depends. Like, I think look, I, I don't mind the location history being there. You know, you could look back, you know, when you're 60, you go, oh, what was I doing on May the 2nd, 2019? You know, you could go, oh, that's what I was doing when I could walk. Uh, yeah, and things like that. But, yeah, maybe app history, yeah, you get rid of that. Anything like that you don't really care about. Probably look back to when you were 20 and go, oh, I remember that, uh, that evening at that woman's place. That was, a, <laughs> that was a lovely dinner. And later found out that she was into reassigning as well. No. <laughs> Never went back. <laughs> well, you know what? You might even forget people's birthdays. I wonder if that's going to be an issue. Because you know how it comes up and reminds you it's so and so's birthday and uh, things like that. Do you know, I I hate getting birthday reminders. <laughs> so I, do I. I, I feel obligated to, to say happy birthday. And then everyone thanks you for it. And you're like, oh, no, now I'm going to have to do it again. Well, I, look, I don't mind it on Facebook too much. Like, And, yeah, I wish people happy birthday. But when it comes through on the bloody email calendars and they're popping up everywhere on the phone going, this person in your contact that you've never met's birthday, and you go, I hate this. Turn it off. So I, I'm I've just still to this day have not put my birthday into Facebook. You know, yeah, I must have registered Facebook before they required it. Yeah, right. And, and I still haven't put it in. So when my birthday pops up, it does, well, it doesn't. Nobody knows. Cause, and then I always think to myself, that's so great. Because oh, but you've always got a relative or a friend reminding you. Yeah, mm. but if I put it on Facebook so everybody wishes me happy birthday, I feel like I'll be obligated to return the favour. Yeah. <laughs> return the, return oh. the birthday. Well, so I'll figure if I don't have mine in there and they're not wishing me, and I don't have to wish them. I just recently had a a a, 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 unf- a little private unfriend party, and I just went I just went through and just thought you know if I haven't really met you in real life, pretty much pretty much chances are I'm going to flick you now because you're off, Jace. I'm out here too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're not. Jace, you well, met him in real life, mate. <laughs> that's right. Me and Joe out of here. We're, we're gone. Well, yeah, well, I didn't mean it that that literally, but uh, <laughs> well, maybe not yeah, met him real, in real life, but spoke this online. This is the this is the extent of real life. I'll, I'll include this. Okay, including online. Yeah, I'm getting uh, I'm getting pretty harsh. I think I must be just getting old. It's a bit cranky, crotchety. Uh, is that all, is that all for that one, Joe? If you can't yeah, fluently yeah. remember their names, I think then that's <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, so I've got another couple of ones. I don't know which one I should do because one could probably fit straight in. So I will do that one. We're talking about Facebook and everything, so I'll talk about this one. I think Jordan just ran over it just a bit before. But Facebook will be overrun by dead people within 50 years. So by the year, by the year 2070, dead users could outnumber living ones uh, with potential implications on how our digital profiles are stored. So I thought that after a little while that the face, these Facebook profiles were... Uh, deleted, but I know of a couple of people that have unfortunately passed, and no, their their profile's still up. People still no, talking to them. The, not with all the photos and everything and videos they store on them these days. I suppose they can't delete them. Well, from 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 memory, I think there is an option there to allow it to stay there. Right. Um, and uh, just as a, a like. You can't do anything with it, but it just sits there. I think there is an option for that. Because I know of particular one account that no one knew the password how to get into it. Uh, so, yeah, it was not, it's not being updated by this by the particular person because he died. But, uh, you know, the family were quite... They wanted to keep it going, but it's still there, so I don't know. But the reason... a nice way to keep the memory alive, though, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah, it is. And you, I go through it every now and then and just have a bit of a look. And, and they're posting new pictures as well, you know, like oh, pictures from their own, say, collections. Oh, this is such and such on his birthday. Wish you were here, blah, blah, blah. So it's it's good. But you know, look, there is going to be a problem. Uh, and apparently, you know, the prediction is about... Yeah, tw- 
Yeah, 2070. The researchers predict at least 1.4 billion Facebook users will die before the year 2100. And uh, the dead will outnumber the living in about 50 years. Uh, the statistics give rise to a new and difficult question surrounding who has the right to this data. So how should it be managed in the best interest of families and friends and also uh, for future use possibly by historians? Look, I think um, it should definitely be left in your will. Absolutely. Yeah, right. Okay. That's a, a, a password in your will or something. You, you know, anybody who hasn't got a will is a bit silly, really, anyway. Well, maybe your password to your last pass. Might yeah, be that's right. Yeah. Well, I said that to my wife. I haven't given her access to my last pass, but I said to her, you know, you, we should do the share user account thing because what if, God forbid, anything did happen, you know? Like, mm. Well, this is true. This is you got to look at look at after these sort of things. And if you're running a business or whatever, like yeah, if if you're the only one with a password, if you're the tech person, and you're the only one with the super admin password that you change every sixty days, like yeah, and then, you know every twelve months, all your friends get a notification saying it's your birthday when you've been dead for a year. Mm, yeah, <laughs> everyone starts wishing you happy birthday, and you're not really there. Yeah, but anyway, this guy David Watson, a student at the Oxford Insta- Internet Institute. Explained in a statement, never before, I've got a, a graphic here I can put up, uh, never before in history has such a vast archive of human behaviour and culture been assembled in one place. Controlling this archive will, in a sense, be to control our history. It is therefore important that we ensure that access to these historical data is not limited to a single for profit firm. It is also important to make sure that future generations can use our digital heritage to understand the history. So, well, that's just weird, isn't it? Like, you know, should. Like you could argue, should this information be stored for historical research anyway? Like, it's your own personal life. Like, should it become like an opt-in sort of thing, like organ donation or something? Um, Depends on how personal the information is that's on there, I suppose. But hmm. most, most people, you know, I think by now know that you wouldn't put anything on Facebook that you don't want anyone else to know. I mean... Yeah. I don't know. Can't you still like, tag people who are past... Like if you I think want so. the tags on its past, um, so that they can continue to see photos, for example. I mean, I've got a uh, a cousin that passed, and uh, he he still has his active, and um, his kids are were well, still only very little, but the people who who knew him um, still kept uh, going back to his Facebook mm. to see how his kids were growing up. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. So it's good in one way, you know what I mean? I, I sort of like that. But I guess like in 100 years, when, every, when everyone here today is dead, uh, is well, that... Is are that, you really going to care in 100 years? No, no, that's right. No, no I won't. But um, it's just, a, just another one of those things, isn't it? Like, you know, you could trawl through actual people's day-to-day lives and get a, an idea of what life was like 100 years ago. I like, think that kind of thing is good. But I think that the information, if it's going to be historical, will have to have some sort of mm. categorised information that you would allow to be historical and mm. stuff. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. At some point, there has to be a cut-off point where you, you know data gets stopped writing to that particular account at some point. And don't forget, we're talking about Facebook here, but then you've got Twitter, you've got emails, you've got um, you know Instagram, you've got all these other accounts that need to be looked at as well. And how do they how do they store when when does it stop? You know, like it's I don't know. Say the world continues for another thousand years. When do, when does how much data is too much data? Will they do you want to keep personal day to day accounts of people's lives from a thousand years ago? Like it's crazy. <laughs> it's it's be good, but imagine that just the the space that it all takes up. Or maybe we'll all be rated oh, important or interesting life, non interesting life. Yeah. You know all this sort of stuff. Not unless you're the future Jesus or some sort of mm. Elvis Presley. Something. <laughs> oh, is the Elvis movie getting made on the Gold Coast? Ooh. Is well, it really? Yes. <laughs> that was a side side note. Uh, all right, uh, Joe, you got a smartwatch story. I do. Who remembers the tiles that Windows uh, phone used to have, you know, with the tiles yes. that used to flip over and, you know, told you information about, you know, yeah, weather and stuff like that? whether you liked or did like. I actually did like the tiles for the Windows uh, operating system. I liked system. them, but I was always in the middle. I was always on the fence about it. I liked them, but I didn't. And I, did. I like them. I, I did. I actually like them. Mm. Well, apparently now um, Google's taken on that sort of thing with their Wear OS smartwatches. Yeah. Um, in the last five years, they've been working to refine the smartwatch software 
to make it uh, feel simpler, more intui intuitive, and easier to use. Um, improvements have gone um, well, apparently, and uh, it's working a lot smoother now. Right. So well, hopefully the they can, you know, they can design their tiles a little bit better to be more identifiable. Because I think that's the biggest thing I hated with the Windows ones. Well, that's right. I mean, the hardest thing about looking at your watch and, and me, I'm, I'm a classic example of that. Is the, the the data that you're looking at, the right you're looking at, is too small for whatever it is. So if you can have uh, a specially designed widget for a specific purpose, I mean, they're talking about here, um, you know, you know, at a glance. Um, you can see widgets that are, you know, talking about the weather, um, what's coming up next on your calendar, um, your heart rate monitor, uh, news headlines. You know, all you, you know. Apparently, this particular um, update that's coming up soon is. is um, all you've got to do is, is swipe left uh, on your watch face, mm. um, which you know, which is pretty much uh, pretty good. I reckon uh, maybe. Um, Look, I, I like the tiles, to be honest. I thought... Well, that's kind of what the Samsung one has, isn't it? You're right. You've got a Samsung watch, Jordan. Is that pretty much like the Samsung watch? Yeah, well, you can spin the face on it to get the, all the little different app icons, but then you can just swipe for your main one. So you've got like... Um, um, I don't know if I can show you. I might be able to. Like, you can kind of... You just swipe. Oh, now it wants a password because I took it off my wrist. You just swipe... Hang on. How do you put a password into those things? God. So you can just swipe them. Yeah, right. Okay, so it's pretty much the same sort of thing. But um, so, um, but that's not using Google OS. That's using a Tizen uh, operating system. Uh, Alexa, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like... When you said tiles before, what, what concerned me was... like, I, and I, I did like the Windows tiles and the Windows phones, but... It used to bug me that you couldn't tell. Like, if I was to look at my start menu on my computer and, and look for the Spotify icon, yeah. I couldn't tell you which one was Spotify because... I didn't work on a computer. Because the live tiles would be flicking through, you know? The App Store would be flicking and then the Spotify mm. would be flicking and then the weather... Yeah, true. Like, which one's which? <laughs> yeah. But I don't think on a watch it's, it's like kind of like that. I think the watch is directly... It's directly the information that you need once. Mm. It's the only thing you see, and then you see the next one, mm. and then you see the next one. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll reserve judgment, I guess. I'll, the the tiles are gone anyway. If I, if I wanted to go through the apps, I can turn the watch face. Well, like, realistically, like I've still got tiles on my PC. You know, on my Windows, I hit the start button, and I still get tiles come up. And like, realistically, I never click on a tile. I guess I couldn't tell you what tile was no, what. No, nah. well, I can t I can see because they're they're named and everything, which is okay. But to be honest, like if I wanted to start uh, Edge, I've never clicked the tile. If I wanted to look at the calendar, I've never clicked the tile, and etc. etc. If I wanted even to even like even if they had the name written on the bottom of the tile, like well Edge, they do like, now. You can't see it. It's just like if I was to look on a phone, if I was to pick up my phone and go, "Where's Spotify?" I know what the icon looks like. Yeah. So you look for the icon. If you if it was just an app flicking over with different artists, I'd mm. be so Oh yeah, I get that. I get that. Um, I mean, I use I use the Windows 10 Start menu like you do like you would with um with the tiles that are on it. Pretty much like a desktop. I mean, rather than having the, the icons all on your desktop, you have it in the Start menu, which is pretty much more neater. But sure, they're interactive. You know, you get them, you know, flicking over with new news results and and calendar events and you know, and, and whatever else that you have going. That's how I use mine. I actually use mine. Yeah, but when you want to actually click on it and open the app, does it take you a couple of seconds to work out which app was which at a glance? Like if you it, it, my, the, my, my one's got the, um, the name of the app underneath. I mean, I can look yeah. at mine right now and it's got Office. Um, it's got the Splunk. I mean, it's got the remote desktop. Um, yeah, mine had the names too. I think, I suppose my point is that I think they, they just get too busy. And it kind of takes your focus away from the label. Yeah, I mean, I, I use it. I use them with the start menu rather than have them all over my desktop. Yeah, yeah, so do I from time to time, but it's just not as common as, you know, in the old days, Windows Seven and XP, you just click the start button, you go look at the icon, and you're done. Yeah, well, that's pretty much what I do. If I'm looking for a program, I'll click the start button, start typing its name. And yes. this comes up. Uh, I, even on the phone, I went to. I've installed the Microsoft Launcher, Jordan. 
and uh, it's made the phone a little bit more snappier, so which is good. Really? Yep. Yeah. And which I, phone? sorry, on which phone? The Xiaomi. Why you Xiaomi? The MA one because I thought it was starting to get a bit sluggy. You know, oh, the Microsoft the actual Microsoft launcher. Yeah. Yeah. Microsoft and I've, I've paired that with the computer and so now I get the text messages you can look at photos that are on the phone on the computer um, yes that's not it's bad one of the most, it's one of the most popular um, launches I think yeah right yeah and it, and it I thought you meant theme then I think I thought you were trying to make your phone look like a Windows phone. oh right. no hell no uh, no I, I didn't like the tiles that much I don't think but yeah no it's uh, it's worked really good it's uh yeah it's uh what other advantage oh it's got the the little notification dots you know of, of missed events or whatever uh yeah, at back like oh i had that for some reason i had the nova launcher that wasn't showing it i, I do i still do miss I, I don't have the you know if you miss an sms it just keeps sms every two minutes and lets you know that there's been one uh i don't have that but i can live with that live without that yeah i actually used a microsoft launcher as well and i've been using it for over a year and i love it same. I yeah. use it as my default launcher on, except for on my Pixel phone. That's the only place I haven't used it. But on, on all my iPads and mm. stuff like that, all Microsoft launchers. Yeah. Yeah. So it's good. Um, are you finished with that one, Joe? Yep. All right. Now I think I might have. Oh, not too many more. I think I might have one more. Or maybe two. How's this dude? Old Phil Watson, 31, Newcastle in England. He's been playing Minecraft. Uh, one game. He's been playing for five years. So, but unfortunately, <laughs> I'll tell you what he's done first. He's, he's walked 6,316 kilometres. He's flown 7,798 kilometres, jumped 732,389 times, uh, but he died at the end of the game. He said it was a silly move. He, got, uh, he said he got a bit full of himself and he was startled by a zombie baby and eaten by a spider. He was playing the most difficult hardcore mode, which means his character cannot be brought back to life. So I've got a picture, if you're on the video, of old Phil. There he is. Now, he said he started playing... Uh, I started playing... I started saying I was the world's longest hardcore survivor because I couldn't find anyone else. We couldn't find anyone who had lasted more than a couple of months. Uh, he said that um, he would play the Minecraft app for around 20 hours a week. <laughs> My gosh. Uh, for those, so what's 20 hours a week? Say, do you t include weekends? Yeah, so say include weekends, that's three hours a day. Holy dooly. Uh, for the for those who are with Minecraft, Minecraft uh, Phil's character was attacked by a zombie wearing, attacked by a zombie baby wearing enchanted armor. So he ran away from it and he was shot in the back by a hidden skeleton which knocked him into the spider. He could have survived all this if, if he had eaten a health-giving globe apple sooner, he said. He, he went on to say he ran out of luck. There's not so much I could have done. I felt stupid making such an easy mistake. He has more than 3,500 followers on YouTube, nearly 2,000 on, on uh, Twitch, and he's known as Philza, P-H-I-L-Z-A. And he also met his fiancée on, uh, online. See so how good's he going? Good stuff. So I'd be pretty disappointed if I was doing a five-year game too and died for something silly. Anyway, that's what happens. Um, any comments on that? Or we all agree, pretty silly, silly move. No, not me. I don't play games. He should have. He, he, nah, he should have eaten that. Uh, whatever it was. What was it? The uh, the health-giving golden apple sooner. He should have done that. Uh, look, uh, just a couple of quick ones then before we go, or maybe what, a quick one. Uh, for all those on Telstra NB, uh, Telstra Cable, and there's probably quite a few of us still out there, me included. It won't be long, it's getting changed. Telstra Cable broadband speeds are set to double for many customers across the country as they get rid of the capped or the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the, sh the, the lower speed tier. So I think there was two speeds on cable. You can have the 50 megasecond, and then you pay an extra 20 bucks and you get the 100 megasecond. Uh, Telstra is finally scrapping the the $20 fee to go to increase your speed to 100. So what's happening is all the 50 people uh, will just automatically go to 100 megs down. Uh, so that's good. Does for that the mean I get a discount? Are you on cable? Cable? Or are you on MBN? No, I'm on MBN, but I pay the extra fee to go faster. No, I think this is just for cable. Oh, yeah, so if you're if you're on cable like I am paying the extra twenty, apparently you'll get that off. Uh, so that's going to start uh, 
in May sometime, I read. Uh, I can't have got a proper date here, but I think it's in May. Uh, you know, I was watching a bit of a... I was watching a bit of a... I don't want to get into politics, but I was watching a bit of a political debate um, on... Um, on what was it? I think Q&A or something like that. And they were talking about the NBN and how bad the network is. Yeah, right, right. And how nobody's getting up to the 100 speeds. Yes. And then I think to myself... That's because you're not paying for it. Yeah, yeah, but even if you pay for it, you sort of oh, you get close, aren't you? But I don't think you're actually, you're not seeing a hundred. I'm getting seventy five, eighty. But that's not a hundred. No, but it's still for a fibre to the node. It's yes. still pretty fast. If I had fibre to the curb, obviously I'd have more. But they they rubbish it and saying that they're not getting any more than twenty three. Oh no, and that's I say, not well, that is, but that that is what the basic. Yeah. Telstra plan is 23 megabits. It doesn't yes. go any higher than that. So unless you're going to pay for the mid-strength or, or full-strength service, you're not going to get those faster speeds. And everyone keeps complaining about it. And then they say they're, you know, it's terrible. It drops in and out. And I think to myself, well, how much more Wi-Fi do we need in this in, mm. in the planet? How much interference do you think we get from Wi-Fi? So everyone, I just think everyone's quick to point the finger. I don't have a lot of problems. I think, um, look, the issue is I think it started with one government, it's gone through another government and uh, it's cost $50 billion and if they say it started off that everyone's going to get 100 and $50 billion later and we haven't, particularly with fibre to the node, we're getting dropouts, it's, sometimes it's slow, it, it goes down, it's not real. But are the dropouts you're getting, are they on, are they Wi-Fi dropouts or, or, or actual internet? No, they're, dropouts? they're to the node, I think. Like I know a guy that... Uh, so no, I can get a dropout from typical Telstra modems that are not very good, you know, made, yes. made cheaply and sold to everyone for hundreds of dollars. Um, and you get dropouts, but then if you go and get on your hardwired computer, you find your internet's still going and it's just your Wi-Fi that's dropping in there because you're getting interference from every other bloody Wi-Fi signal in the area. You know? Yeah, we've got a Facebook post here from Andrew. He says he doesn't get more than 23 down despite paying for 40. So and he's not with Telstra, but he's still with the MBN. So look, I'd have a guess and say, Andrew, that you've got fibre to the node, I'd say. Um, yeah, have, mate, there's a... There's a website you can go to. I um, can't remember what it's called. You'd have to Google it. Uh, but it tells you the distance of your of your of your distance from the exchange. Right. Yeah. Well, to the node. Give you kind of a good indication, or well, maybe not from the node, but it should give you some sort of indication of how close you are to the technology in general. Like if you're, you know, a few kilometres out, I'd be kind of sceptical. I mean, I get. If I'm getting, I'm pretty close to the exchange and I'm getting kind of 80 megabits a second. Mm. But see, well, well, who are further out who aren't. well, see, I'm on cable and I'm getting 120 down and I'm going to lose that, pay more to go for less speed. Like they can do, I'm doing 120 down right now and, and, uh, better than me. Yeah. But I mean, like, you know why that's the big question like and yeah you know, look it's that's not good for 50 billion dollars you know you promise one thing you probably won't expect delivery but i know what you mean jordan like 80s fine well, we weren't promised it you know if you think about when um if you think about when tony Abbott got in and promised fiber to know they never said it was gonna be no nah, he was he pulled it back turnbull was oh well, it started off with uh what's it jigger rudd he was fiber to the premise for yeah, everyone, he was to the curb or the premise or whatever. Yeah, and uh, then it's like we could save all this money and we'll do it, but it was always up to. It was never actually a hundred. No, uh, well, I don't know. I remember him play, saying play on words. It was always up up to a hundred. But what never, about what about I could go further than a hundred? Go to gigabits. It's fibre. It can do all this. I'm just saying they know? never promised. They never promised further than a hundred. Well, their Telstra is not doing it now anyway, are they? That they've just seen their plans. They stop My it. My point was is that Telstra still, and most most of the companies still put a limit on the speed anyway and make you pay for it. That's right. Telstra charges extra thirty bucks. Like you say to them, well, "Where's your higher plans? Higher than what sixty or something? Sixty down?" And they go, "Oh, you got to pay an extra thirty bucks for that." And you can go to other companies, and it's all just open slather, whatever the whatever's unshaped coming down the pipes. But anyway, that's uh, that's another thing. Anyways, an old minefield of everything. But it looks so much to talk about with NBN, but I hate getting into all that stuff. I just think it just 
I just think that there's so many discrepancies between so many different users that I don't think that you can. I don't think. I don't think as much blame as everybody says there is. To be honest, I think it's still. I think it's still reasonable. But I mean, it could obviously be better. But well, all people on NBN, you can't. You can't guarantee that everybody on the NBN. No, I wanted to go with a Telstra. Uh, I don't think I will because I like the Telstra because of the backup, 4G backup. But realistically, how often does it go down? And maybe I can just put up with yeah, not having you know, that. Over the years, the amount of times I've changed my service provider and I've tried all these different ones and always ended up coming back to Telstra. Always. How many times have you changed your phone and always gone back to Telstra? Yeah, I haven't gone back. In, on a serious note, how many times have you gone out and come back? Oh, once. But I'm off now. I don't think I'll be coming back. <laughs> They're too expensive. They really are. They're just too expensive. They are expensive, but you get what you pay for. You want to go yeah. for a cheap service, you get, you know. You, and often Telstra are selling it to these other companies anyway and not giving them the full potential so that they look better. I've got I've got my phone bill down now to $15 a month. Nice. <laughs> nice. What's <laughs> that? It's pretty good. Yeah, so I, I only get two. Uh, Audi. Audi. The good old Audi. I Are they still on 2G or 3G? <laughs> Edge. <laughs> HP, whatever it was. HF, whatever they that thing was. Yeah, all right, let's get out of here. It's, um... You know what, I, I wanted to... I, I didn't have any time for any stories tonight, so I apologise for uh, not coming with stories. But while we were talking through the show, I managed to pick up a couple of headlines. So I might just make a comment on the headlines and not actually read the stories. One of them was um, cell phones now outnumber the world's population. I think we kind of knew that, but I just sort of say that and you can have a quick comment interesting. on interesting, yeah, interesting. It's, Kind of, kind of true. Um, and another headline was that Samsung might be working on a new phone with a wraparound display. Have you heard anything about that? Yeah, I think we've done a few of those, haven't we? Have we? I think the wraparound so. display. Would that, would that be like a like a, the book, the one that opens up? No, a wraparound, like a roll round. Oh, right. Oh, I think I've seen those. They look like a bangle that you put around your arm. So that would, I'm assuming, would be like a bangle or some sort. We so, had, we did the one with the uh, the roll up telly. Yeah, there was a roll-up telly. Yeah. I remember those that came out. We saw actually saw video footage of those, didn't we? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, and then another one was, um, oh, I think there was a burnt phone and Samsung's denying it was there. I'm not worried about that one. But Huawei, and I, I don't know about Huawei. Everyone always picks on Huawei and says, oh, I wouldn't trust them. But Huawei phone sales are blooming while Apple and Samsung are slumping. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. The, so the, the, uh, the, the current... Say political climate all to do with the Huawei that doesn't phase you. I don't. I don't know. I I'd be in two minds. I just don't know if I if you'd buy a phone. Maybe it's probably who cares if Chinese listen to you. They're probably listening right now. But who says they're not anyway? That's exactly right. Who says Apple's not? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I heard Jason mention the other day on his show that he loves the foldable Huawei more than he likes the Samsung one. Right. Okay. The Samsung folded one. They've been getting bubbles and stuff in the fold. Oh yes. Yeah. Bit of in there and it's, so they've now said that's it. We're not going to release them. They've delayed it. Yeah, right. So they're going to be. Um, they're going to find. They want to fine tune it more before they release it. Mm. But I, I didn't like the Huawei. One. I loved the, what it looked like, but I didn't like the fact that the screen was on the outside of the device all the way around. Yeah, I yeah. Just think it's a, a problem waiting to happen. But Huawei are coming up with some pretty cool kind mm. of ideas. It's just whether you want to. Look, I'm still relatively happy with my MA1. Uh, like a few software updates later, it probably is a tiny bit more sluggish. Um, I did turn on my old iPhone 6 the other day, and to be honest, that's a much better experience. But still, you know, these ones, they get goes flat too fast, and I'm not spending another $2,000 to get another one. But yeah, so. I still have an upgrade. I've still got my Pixel 1, I haven't upgraded it. Mm. Yeah, they're having a little bit of problems since the updates, but then they release more updates and fix the problems they had. Eventually, it'll get better. Mm. But all right, that uh, sounds good. Was that but it? They Jordan? reckon the Pixel Three sales have dropped. Yeah, right. I think it. Well, if there's more smartphones than people, something's got to stop, hasn't it? Well, everyone's got one, so it's like a pair of socks. If you've all got socks, you don't really go buy new ones. Well, I think I think socks would pretty much out out <laughs> out outdo the population, wouldn't it? I think. Probably, yep. Probably. I'd be pretty confident. I wonder, in the whole world, if you could count all the socks, I wonder if there'd be an even or odd number. Just something <laughs> to think about for on the, through the week. <laughs> about colours and patterns, you know? Like, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got a red and a blue one. Two pairs of them. Uh, I reckon. Uh, I reckon condoms would out would out do the population of the human population as well. But it, you'd think that they wouldn't. Yeah, well, there's probably a lot of those around too. In Stuck you in various places. More people than condoms, but I reckon. <laughs> All right. Let's, I reckon the other way around. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. That this conversation is uh, getting too interesting. I was just <laughs> trying to be kind of like it. I know it's a weird way to kind of a weird analogy, but I'm just thinking there's that many people. Well, the more should there be more or less? Well, the more condoms, the less people. That's right. That's, that's right. what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Yeah. So if there's more of those, there should be less people, shouldn't there? That's right. Well, we're we I think we're a dying species, aren't we? I think we're not. We're not. Well, it's the uh, yeah, the Western society is not populating, repopulating itself as fast as some of the others. So, who knows what's going to happen in a in a thousand years when Facebook looks back on its wide, the it's, it's all its media tapes and picks out pick through our lives in a thousand years. Yeah, when time. they go looking back through history and they pull up, um, you know. Aussie tech heads. <laughs> mm. Yeah, well, that's the uh, show that was on 300 years ago. Oh, I reckon that they'd pull that out and rerun it. Rerun it again. <laughs> eh? They'd rerun it alongside, you know, neighbours and home and away. Oh, no. Run it along Doctor Who. I'll be happy then. All right, let's go. <laughs> that's enough. My phone just went flat. I can't see any more Facebook posts. So uh, thanks for coming in, Jordan. Good to see you again after another couple of weeks and after Easter. Yeah. So we'll see you next week. And well, there's not a heap of. Uh, uh, comments on Facebook to read out tonight, but thanks to Andrew for uh, listening in and anyway, for making the comments he made anyway. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Thanks for coming in. That's good, all right. Good to see you, hear you again. And uh, we'll uh, see you guys next week then. So uh, you know where to find us on the iTunes or your favourite podcatcher on the YouTube. Uh, you can catch us live on the Facebook at around about 7 p.m. Eastern. So just, uh, that's a very American way of saying it, isn't it? Uh, so just, um, yeah, tune in and download us and we'll bring you up to date. All right. Until then, it's bye from all of us and hopefully the Sharks can win against the Storm this week. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Ciao.